So this video is going to be a solution to the work for position dependent forces uh, question or problem that I gave on teams. So let's just go ahead and get started. So in this problem, what I give you is this situation where you're applying some force downward at this angle of theta on this uh, block of mass m. There is some force of friction due to a coefficient of friction between the mass and the block. Uh, and the thing that's special about this problem is that unlike previous problems, here our force is some function of distance. So the further you push this, the more force you're applying, essentially. Okay. So let's uh, start the, the problem here with um, question one. This says, uh, draw a free body diagram for the block labeling all forces acting on it. So uh, for one, we're going to have, here's our block, some normal force, some force of uh, gravity. Then we have our applied force. So this is going to be at some angle of theta. And it was going to call us F sub A of X. And then we have our force of friction. Okay, So four forces acting on this. The next thing that we want to do is to sketch a plot of the X component of the applied force as a function of X. And so in order to do that, what we need is a coordinate system here. So here's our coordinate system. Here's the X direction. Here's the Y direction. So what we really want uh, for the X component of uh, F sub A, because F sub A uh, vector, this is, this is some vector, this is going to be equal to some f sub a x, x hat, plus f sub a uh, y, y hat. And so that's just going to be the same thing as completing this triangle that we have here. So there's the x direction. There's the x direction. Uh, so there's our x direction and our y direction. So here's our y direction. So there's y, y hat. Okay. And then uh, we have like some uh, F, A, and then uh, here's our F, A in blue for our Y. Okay. So now what this means here is that uh, in order to break this into components, this uh, F, A, X is going to be equal to the magnitude of the force, which here I tell you is some F, 0, X over, I think I call this distance D quantity squared times the cosine of theta. Okay, So now we'd like to plot this. And you know I don't give you explicit values for this, but we can plot what the tendency of this function is going to be. So this is 2. We can plot the tendency of this function. And it's just a quadratic that uh, has uh, intercept at the origin. So it's going to look something like that. Okay, I'm going to do this a little bit bigger because we're going to uh, use it in a second here. So um, here is our plot, and then this is going to do something like that. Okay, So this is uh, f a x as a function of x. This is going to be uh, the x direction of displacement x. Okay, So the next part we want to do is we want to explain what this plot says and uh, con uh, conceptually what features of this plot relate to the work done by the force and y. So here we know that the work the work done by the supplied force, so work done by applied force is going to be equal to the integral uh, from where it starts, call it R1, to where it ends, call it R2, of F dot dr. So this is our applied force. So features that we have plotted here, that's just the function for the force. And then we want to talk about, well, how does this relate to uh, something of interest uh, later on? This is going to relate to the work. If I say that here is the distance d, so this is going to be x is equal to d, then the feature of interest here is going to be the area under this curve because we're integrating. Okay, So we add up all of the force times the little elements of the position right? uh, along this path. And this uh, shaded area here that I have in pink, which is uh, representing the area under the curve, is identically the work. Okay? And so to label exactly what I mean when I talk about uh, dx, let's uh, put this here. Okay. Uh, I don't like that color. It's not showing up very well. So uh, let's try that one. Uh, that one's not too much better. But uh, let's see. Yeah, this is, this is going to be the best right here. That's the best right there. Okay. So this is some little slice of this dx. Okay? And so this is what I'm talking about when I, when I talk about um, uh, little pieces of the path. Then this is connecting to you know, the more familiar uh, definition of uh, 
the uh, integral in terms of the area under the curve. So uh, this next part that we're going to want to do has to do with more uh, mathematically, more rigorously defining what dr is in this case. So for this part, I've already partially defined it, but dr is a vector. So we want to talk about dr. Well, dr is going to be x hat times dx. And the reason why it's going to be an x hat is because this points in the x direction, right? So it points uh, to you guys, it's that way. So it points in the x direction. So that's what this portion is right here. And it's tiny little slices of the x-axis, which I have uh, represented in this graph right here. So tiny little slices of the x-axis. So uh, that's why it's going to be dr uh, vector is equal to x hat dx. And so the next thing that we want to do is we want to find the work done by the x component of the applied force uh, in the direction uh, to move the block from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to d by applying the work energy theorem or the uh, definition of work. So that's to just take this equation that we have here. Now that we've represented all of these things graphically, we understand them a little bit better for why it is that we're doing what we're doing. And we're just going to evaluate the equation. So when we evaluate this equation, what this says is the work done, this is four, the work done by the applied force is going to be equal to the integral from R1 to R2 of the applied force dotted with dr. But we remember that dr is um, just going to be this. So it's only going to pick off the uh, terms that are going to be in the x direction, which in this case says that this is going to be equal to uh, f0 x divided by d quantity squared times cosine of theta times, um, uh, this is going to be times uh, dx, right? And then when we talk about our limits of integration, where do we start? We're starting at the origin, so we go from 0, and we're going to go up to distance d. Okay. So when we evaluate this integral, what we end up finding is that this is going to be f0 uh, divided by d squared times uh, x cubed over 3 evaluated d, which is going to be uh, x cubed over 3 evaluated x is equal to d times cosine of theta, which ultimately says that this is going to be f0 d squared, uh, just uh, times d divided by 3 uh, times cosine of theta. Okay? Good. Good. So then, the next part that we have, we want to do essentially the same thing for the force of friction as a function of x. Now, in order to find the force of friction, we need to go back to our free body diagram because the force of friction is going to be the normal force times the uh, coefficient of friction. Right? So we have the we have the uh, force of friction, uh, I like to do this with a lowercase f, so this is, force of friction is going to be equal to mu times n, okay? Where we can determine n by considering the sum of the forces in the y direction. So when we do that, and uh, you, we can refer to our free body diagram, you can't quite see mine while I'm doing this, but when we do that, this is going to say that this is going to be n minus mg minus fa times sine of theta, and this is going to be equal to zero because uh, it doesn't move up or down in the uh, uh, y direction. It's not accelerating in y. And so this says that the normal force is going to be equal to mg plus f sub zero x squared over d squared times sine of theta. And so that says that the force of friction uh, ultimately is going to be equal to mu times mg times, uh, or sorry, plus uh, uh, f zero times uh, x squared over d squared times sine of theta. Okay, so now we want to talk about the work that's done. We have to be careful here when we're doing the work done by friction. Um, so I don't, I don't remember exactly how I broke this apart. I want to do it exactly the same. So um, we want to find the work uh, done. Uh, uh, we're on uh, uh, five, I think, actually. So we, uh, we figured out that work. So we're, yeah, we're on five. So what we want to do here now is we want to sketch a plot of the uh, force of friction as a function of x, okay? So when we're plotting this one now, when we're plotting this one now, and I'm gonna do this as a vector because the force of friction, ultimately, force of friction is uh, opposing the motion. So this whole thing really has a negative sign on it. 
right? Because going uh, in this direction is positive, going in this direction is going to be negative. And so uh, the force of friction is ultimately negative. But it's also offset by a certain amount. So when we plot this, here's our plot. And I'm actually just going to draw this with the, um, this is uh, the x direction. This is the uh, force of friction as a function of x. This is going to be negative, and it's going to go away from uh, the origin and, and an accelerating kind of rate. So what, what that means is it's going to look like this. Okay. And it's going to start with some uh, value here already. Okay. So that's plotting this. But then we want to, again, talk about the features that we have here. And so the area under the curve here, again, is going to represent the work done by the force of friction. So we can draw this down here. Uh, what was the color that I used here to be consistent? So we're, we're doing this. Now this, is draw, this isn't drawn to scale, so obviously the, um, the uh, area under the curves are not going to be uh, the same in terms of scaling, but uh, this is really just meant to help you visualize this. And so area under the curve is representing the work. Here is some tiny little slice of the path, a little slice of this, where some tiny little amount of the work, so we could say like some tiny little amount of the work, this is going to be equal to this dx times fx, right? Because it's a, it's a little box, and that little, uh, that little box, or that little rectangle, has a height of fx, and it has a uh, width of dx. So if I want to find what the little area of that box is, which is ultimately what the work is going to be, or a tiny little piece of the work, we say that dw is equal to f of x times dx. And then to find what the work is done over the entire thing, we add up all of the little pieces. And so that's what the work uh, means, ultimately. We're adding up all the little pieces of tiny little bits of work, which are made up by the forces times the uh, little distances that uh, those forces act over. Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to explicitly calculate this. So this is part six. So this is going to be the work done by friction is uh, going to be uh, equal to uh, the integral from R1 to R2 of the force of friction dotted with dr. dr stays the same, right? Because dr just says something about the path and the coordinate system that we choose. So this is going to be x hat dx, same reason that we had before. But f, we have to be careful because, like I said, there's a there's negative sign in here. So when I talk about f vector, it's going to point in the negative direction, right? So it's going to point in the negative direction. And so when I take this dot product, really it's uh, uh, f vector is going to be the magnitude of f times uh, minus x hat. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to d of minus mu times mg plus f0 x squared over d squared times sine of theta dx. Okay. So now what we want to do is we just evaluate this integral. Okay. So when we evaluate this integral, we end up seeing this is going to be minus mu mg d. Uh, and I'm going to factor this like this. So this is minus mu mg d plus f0 uh, divided by 3. Same, actually, integral that we did before uh, times d times sine of theta. Okay. If you don't see the connection between these steps, make sure that you do. I'm just doing this briefly because I don't have a lot of time right now. Um, okay. So that's what we end up having when we do the work. Now, the last part, the last part is to find what the velocity is once it's gone this distance. And so we know from the work energy theorem, as opposed to just the definition of the work, the network or the total work is going to be equal to the integral from R1 to R2 of the total force or the net force dot dr. This is going to be equal to change kinetic energy, which is going to be equal to 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. But the net work is really the same as the sum of the work, right? And here, this is going to be the work done by the uh, applied force in the x direction uh, plus the work done by friction, okay? So this is going to give us uh, something that's going to look like this now. So this is going to be f0 divided by 3d cosine of theta minus mu times mg d uh, plus f0 divided by 3 times d sine of theta. And this is going to be equal to 1 half mv2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared. And uh, we're saying that it starts from rest. This is going to be 0. And then we can 
uh, do some algebra to rearrange this. And so when we do that, we end up seeing that this is going to be V2 is going to be equal to 2 divided by M times, uh, how did I group this before? I think I grouped it by the F0, uh, but uh, we, can, we can check this to make sure that it's actually the same. Um, yeah, I, I grouped it by the F0. So Falcon Punch. Uh, so this is going to be uh, 2 over M times F0 over 3 times D times cosine of theta minus mu sine of theta uh, minus uh, mu uh, MGD, okay? And then the whole thing raised to the one-half power, okay? And if we want, we could uh, apply our dimensional analysis here, but I, what, looking at this, it's consistent with what I did before, and um, I checked that uh, once before already, so I'm pretty sure that this is correct. Everything has units of uh, everything has units of work under the integral, so it's going to be units of work time divided by mass, uh, which is going to give us meter squared per second squared uh, to the one half. So this should be correct, uh, barring any uh, uh, halves or, or thirds that I left off, but I'm pretty sure I have those here. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to post these solutions, um, and I'll also post the solutions to the other question that uh, I had you guys work on. Take it easy.